live from the Ohio Cannabis Institute. We're here with Supreme Court Justice, uh, retired Bill O'Neill. And uh, I've invited all the different candidates at one time or another, several times to some candidates, to come and be on the show, to pick their interviewer, uh, certainly if not from our staff, whether it's Fred or Paul or Johnny or Dana or whoever in our group, to then suggest who they would like to be interviewed by. Um, the Green Party accepted, and uh, Bill, Bill was Bill O'Neill was just accepting. Bill was the very first person in the whole political run this round to step out, and he stood up on the marijuana platform and talked about the injustice uh, as early as was that last October? It was early. It was last fall for sure, and. He was very intelligently looking at this and saying, this is a matter of justice. This is a matter of compassion. And as the Supreme Court justice felt he could no longer just idly step by. It, certainly, I'm, I'm 68 now, so at 70... I got you by two. You got to stop and say, there's no point where I just want to get off the horse and relax. Well, Alan, you're, you're talking about last October, November, and I was thinking of running for governor at that point, and then I found you, and I finally, for my first time in my life, I found someone that actually heard what I was saying about marijuana, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not crazy. There's no question that legalizing marijuana in Ohio, as you've been doing for many years, brings great results. It, brings great, it creates jobs. We're thinking 18,000, maybe, we don't really know. It saves lives, maybe a thousand a year. It reduces the use of heroin. Uh, uh, what, 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 what more can I say? It's the right thing to do and it's the right time. Everybody else wants to dither and talk and I'm saying let's, let's get moving. So yeah, I've, I put my, my future on the legalization of marijuana, electing Bill O'Neill governor are one and the same. Well, just off the marijuana platform, and I've, and I've tried to steer the Ohio Cannabis Institute in certain of my words, that I'm a neutral person, but I am running the marijuana platform because all I can think about every night when I go to bed or there's 485,000 epileptic families that I speak for in Ohio. Uh, there's another 500,000 neuro, neurological issue families that have now joined in with that group. We have- That's a um, million people. Don't forget the PTSD veterans, that uh, they're waiting for marijuana. Crohn's and the veterans, 22 veterans a day committing suicide. Can cancer, chemo, parent and patients. I mean, cancer now, and chemo. we are talking about millions of people are waiting for the state of Ohio to do something. And, the, and the, the, this, uh, this half measure of medical marijuana, in my opinion, as we talked last fall, is the wrong angle. It will do something, but that's not what's needed. So we're not just a group of stoners or potheads or irrational people. We're really the very, very middle class uh, family people that have family values and orientations. And we've looked at this. We've gone. We've taken the time to travel around the world, to travel to other countries, to travel to see the top doctors, the top neurologists, all over. I just literally, uh, Sunday got back from Arizona, uh, looked at the program out there, uh, it was a few weeks before that in Denver, and, and looking at the program out there. Several interesting things I really realized going on in Ohio is that a group of out-of-state people, MPP and others, have taken a look at Ohio and said, oh, that's a ripe choice watermelon, just ripe for the picking. And when I say picking, they're talking about financially, and, uh, and they see. And Alan, that's that's a problem. That's a that's a major problem. We do not want people from out of state coming in and turning marijuana into some big business for their profit. Well, Kasich and his gang, uh, David Yost and and Mike DeWine and John. I understand uh, they have a plan. It's the wrong plan. They financially saw you know this out of town group as who they favor. Well, Alan, let's, let's really cut to the chase on that because since I've been on the campaign trail for six months now, people keep asking, here's the big question, Bill, are you a marijuana user? No, 
I, after I got home from Vietnam, I tried it. I chose Budweiser. That was my choice. But when I talked to you and I realized we could take legalization of marijuana and make a bridge to save lives from the heroin crisis in Ohio, a bridge. And I'm sitting there and thinking, why have I been on the campaign trail for five months and I'm the only one that says, if you legalize marijuana, you save opioid crisis deaths. It just, I don't understand Because Mike DeWine the doesn't really even care about the opioid problem. He never showed up in any of the meetings. He never was there to, until it became a political hotball for him. For, for 30 years, Father Swice and I worked in the inner city ghettos of Ohio with heroin addicts and people struggling. We, we, we made food, we, we made soup kitchens, we created homeless family foundations and shelters, and we got to know the mothers and the fathers and the brothers and the sisters and the family members. And uh, uh, we, we understood the real human side of this. And it's not just a quick front page, you know, story that Mike Dwine can flip off something and make some comment. We're the ghetto, Ohio is right now, of the world on heroin and, and we're on opiate abuse. And most of that... And prison, is, and prison population too. And Let's not forget where we're putting them. We've turned it into an industry in Ohio, putting people in prison. And most of them, uh, I'm sorry to say, aren't even the users, they're black. Well, let's, let's be honest about that. We've, we've got a trend coming up in Ohio now where we've decided to profitize our prisons and then we mandatory sentences so that even judges can't stop it. Right. And you, you end up with today. And every prosecutor, every policeman knows this is ridiculous. It's a waste of police time. And anybody so, that's got any compassion at all uh, with, uh, with this movement, and I'm going to do it today, uh, a, a year ago, we, we, I was approached by a group called Compassion in Ohio. And this is family and family members that are saying, Oh God, Alan, doesn't anybody care that we're suffering, we're, we're dying, we're hurting, our family members are hurting. We're financially strapped, we're going crazy, we've been ripped off in the market because we don't know what's been lab tested and what hasn't been lab tested. And we were given all these great assurances that the state would do something. Well, they never built a bridge from the time that they passed House Bill 523 to help the people. So it was never about the people or about the suffering or the dying. Look at look at the, the selection process for medical marijuana and the million dollar licensing. That's just a, it, it's a flawed system. It's going to the wealthy and still the kids in the ER that are having the 20 seizures a day cannot get marijuana that exists in Colorado. They can put it in a FedEx envelope and they'd have it at the doctor's office tomorrow morning, and the seizures would stop, and I'm tired of politicians who are saying, we're doing something. No, you're not. And I think it's pathetic that they've insulted every doctor in Ohio who has not had to go to a special class to say, oh, here, take an aspirin. <laughs> or, oh, it's okay to drink a cup of coffee a day. We've had doctors testify this is less dangerous than an aspirin, less addictive than a cup of coffee. We're going to turn them into criminals. And now we're going to make doctors go back and take a course before they can say, I recommend this for my patients? Alan, That's every, insane! Every doctor in the world is in risk right now of becoming a, a target for the patients who are going to say, I've got this chronic pain, I have to have marijuana. That just should not be the system. Well, if the Bill, person has relief from marijuana, they should be growing it in their backyard and smoking it. It's none of my business. Wow. That is, uh, I'm sure my friend Jim Haggerty over at <laughs> Scott sorry. would love to hear you say that because, honestly, here we are in his home state where he's invested over a billion dollars. Says he knows this is the future of what's getting ready to happen. Well, I told you, you, you laughed at me a month ago, but I know I'm right. I told, you, I told you about the Home Depot plan that I have. I think everybody right. should go out and get a storage shed at Home Depot, get their purple lights, get their, their, their marijuana, grow it in the backyard, lock it up at night so the kids can't get to it. It's the same thing people are doing with beer and wine right now. There's no reason that a law-abiding citizen can't go out in his backyard, in his shed, and grow some marijuana. Who in the world is getting hurt by that? i got to ask, and I've had this opportunity with other Supreme Court justices, and, and 
Don't go, drop, that, don't go dropping names now, Alan. Now that you <laughs> stepped off the bench, yes, uh, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. I, for a long time, have watched the, the seizure of assets to the point that a lot of the county sheriff's office and things, 25% of their budgets are based upon having to go out and confiscate assets. Camaros. They like Camaros. Yeah. Uh, it's In my mind, it is corrupting our police departments in Ohio. Alan, the seizure of any asset by a government without due process of law is wrong. It's unconstitutional. It flies in the face of what America stands for. Oh, thank you, Bill. I, That's not profound. It that is to back, me. It goes back 200 years. It is to everybody that's had I'm their sorry, assets taken. No more Camaros. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad to every policeman that's been put on the spot to where he has to feel like a thief that's to right. satisfy his it's department. Not fair. It's not fair to the cops. It's not uh, fair to the cops. And I don't want any family in Ohio being told, you know, go to Michigan or go to Canada or go to Colorado or California to get the help you need. Uh, we ought to be able to get it right here and we ought to get it right now. It's time we had a governor that was looking out for the welfare of the people of Ohio instead of the Kasich gang, David Yost and John Houston and Mike DeWine. Mike's just part of the game. So's Mary. She was part of that corrupt coal clique, and they controlled the state for over eight years. And it's time that they got out of office. They went away. I mean, there were things that went on with, and, and I, I'm a former Republican. I was never a rhino. I was a <coughs> hardcore capitalist. John Wolf brought me up here. And I'm going to tell you, I, I'm sickened by what I thought Ohio's favorite son, John Kasich, I thought he was a man that I'd be proud of when he got done with office. And I'm sickened by what he did to this state. I'm sickened that he cut the welfare for <coughs> Medicaid children, epileptic children that fall and have seizures and get dental injuries, he took away half of their dental care. So they can go to a dentist once a year. Saved the state $150 million and then turned around without even hardly a blink of an eye, not even a week went by before the boys out of Buckeye Lake, who illegally built on the dam, instead of being held responsible, instead of there being investigations and prosecutions, he turns around and endorses what they did and says, I'm going to take $150 million of state funds and immediately rebuild the lake so that they get their summertime fun in. Uh, they, they shouldn't have to suffer through the sun without having their boats well, out know, on the you lake. You know what you're saying, Alan. You know exactly what you're saying. I know a it's state, a state. I don't even care about Cronyism. I don't care about the corruption part. What I care about is what you're describing is that we all should be judged, not by how well we take care of the well-off people like you and me, right. but what do we do to extend a hand to the poor and the impoverished and the ill in our society. That's, what, you. you're, that's what you're talking about. And the answer should be, we'll throw them in jail. We need more I hospitals could, and less prisons. When Richard, we, we, we've been doing this for all too long. We've got all these prisons. We've got these god-awful for-profit prisons. I was just on a radio station, uh, and they were talking to me about the for-profit prisons are turning this into an art form because now they're taking the prisoners and they're making them into manufacturing uh, employees you know, while minister. they're in jail so that the guy that is keeping him in prison for 20000 a year is using them as, I hate to use the term, but it's slave, slave labor. labor. It's, it's slave it's labor. And, and, I've been in prisons you know, in Ohio as a minister for years. And when we turned it over to for-profit private corporations, right. I thought we'd have gone insane. And then you, you start were, getting you into right. things like were right. quotas and guarantees. How many prisoners can we make sure we give you every year? And then all of a sudden you've got to meet those quotas and you, you pass mandatory sentencing laws, as you mentioned. And all of this starts snowballing into an industry. Well, wait a minute, Alan. It's even, it's even more evil than that because somebody that's in for five years can be reviewed by the Ohio Parole Authority to shorten that sentence if they behaved inside, right? Right. Well, the guy who says whether or not they behaved inside has got a financial incentive to say, no, they haven't. Okay. I don't want to ever have to be there the wrong way. I know as a minister with the bars clanked shut. Follow like the money. Follow that, the money, Alan. That, and that's the answer normally is follow the money. Tragically, so, yes. Right now, and, and this seems so common sense, your platform, and the marijuana platform in general that, hey, hold it, let's legalize it, let's tax it, yeah. 
Let's use that tax for rehabbing, for medical care, and not prison care. I'd rather build more hospitals and less prisons in this state. Alan, our, our prisons today are full of mentally ill people. That is not fair to the mentally ill people because they're not getting treated. Right. It's not fair to the correctional officer because that's not what he's trained to do. And it's certainly not uh, fair to the patient. I mean, this is just, this is nuts. And that's why I'm saying, if you look at legalizing marijuana, which you know more about than I do, right? Okay. And you use that bridge and say, let's legalize marijuana and let's treat the opioid crisis, make them as one package. I haven't found a person that says uh, I'm wrong. I know that 1,666,672 people came out and voted under a horrible nightmare of controversy in 2015. But they came out and voted and said, yes, we want the legalization of marijuana. Sure. Uh, and, and certainly there was a group called Compassion in Ohio that was so upset a year ago about the fact that we didn't have a bridge or anything for the medical need community. Right. And if you're a parent and, you, and you've got an epileptic child, you probably never get more than four or five feet away from them because you're afraid if they go into a grand mal seizure, fall to the ground or something, they're going to get injured, get stitches, or maybe worse, kill themselves. And so all your life you're right there living this extremely intense, this extremely difficult situation. And uh, uh, for us not to, as a community, look at that and say, we can do something about this. But I've come 180 degrees. I was totally against this when I first started. I was not for the legalization medically or for recreational use or any other reason. And I'm gonna say right now, I was wrong. Uh, Dr. Gupta, uh, I'm glad you went on national TV and, and are doing it again and saying, you were wrong and this has gotta change. I'm saying I had to grow up and look at it and quit accepting the sound bites that the media gave me and look deeper into this and say, hey, the heroin problem, a lot of the other issues we're running into right now, prisons and everything else, discrimination, are all rooted in the abuse of this. And any adult in this country, anybody around the world knows that this should not be a level one drug. It's just ridiculous. It's let me, let me, let me interrupt your, your, your lecture because you're so good at this and you know so much. I want to talk about the bridge just one more time, if I may. Please. We're four days out, I'm running for governor. I'm preaching the bridge. I'm preaching legalization of marijuana. I'm talking about saving lives. Well, please tell me you're not for confiscation of guns. No, 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 no. Let's not go down that branch just yet. I'll gladly later. But on the bridge from legalization of marijuana to treating the mentally ill, you've probably got a half a million people in Ohio that listen to you on the marijuana issue. Oh, easy, yeah. I'm gonna ask you right here on live TV. I want your endorsement for my candidacy for governor. Uh, you know I've avoided. I know you have. Not because <laughs> I don't agree with you or I don't like you. And we're friends. <laughs> and, and we're now friends. But yes. the one thing I will say is I invited Dennis on, and uh, Dennis terrified me when he said he was against handguns and want to confiscate every handgun. Yeah. I could just see m SWAT teams and militias pulling up in front of people's houses. People will die. It'd make Ruby Ridge and Waco look like children's play. We can't do things like no. that in Ohio. No, and I've got an answer for you on that subject. And, and but I know first you have to give me an answer on my subject. We're more mature adults looking for mature answers for this. Right. And for all the soccer moms and all the families out there that do listen to me, the 385,000 that sent me an email and said, we'll vote with you on the marijuana platform. I am going to say, I, I see no other candidate right now. I've asked Richard to come on. Uh, I disagree with Richard because when we put Richard on the spot about marijuana, you know what he told me? He's a friend of yours. I know this. He won't, um, he won't give you a yes or no answer to anything. Well, his answer has been that's a police matter. That's what? like saying throw the children in jail. I don't care. A and child, that, wait a minute. A child having 20 seizures a day is a, a police, police matter. matter. No. And that's his answer. To As you know, I'm a registered nurse. I'm offended by that answer. I am offended by that answer. So I can't support Richard at all. Joe, I like him. He's young. I like Joe. Uh, I asked him, I said, hey, are you running on the marijuana platform? He said, yeah. I said, why doesn't anybody know it? He says, I don't want to talk about it out loud almost. And has stayed out there. And I don't think he's really running for governor. I think he's just running politically to gather name recognition. 
And so, doing a very good job of it. So right now, of the Democratic candidates running, you're the only person I can say this for. I do endorse you, Bill. I absolutely, and the Ohio Cannabis Institute uh, is proud to endorse you. Because we don't represent just the people that want to smoke it or want to go out in their backyards and grow it. We're representing the families that have children and loved ones that are important, that are, are a part of this. And I can't walk away from, that's our true audience here. So to you, the moms and dads, please get out and vote. Uh, uh, the primary is very, very important. But I'm on May 8th, Tuesday, primary. For the real voters that vote, you got to come out. And if you're going to come out, I want you to come out and vote for justice, Supreme Court Justice, retired, Bill O'Neill, running for governor on the marijuana platform. At O'NeillForGovernor.org. And, and, that, and Alan, the reason that's important, I haven't wavered an inch since we first met six no, months you ago. No, you haven't. My position is legalize marijuana, treat the opioid crisis. They're, they're one subject. Yeah, I heard it broken down. You want to legalize it. You want to build a network. Of you want to tax it. Absolutely. You want to build a network of facilities to take care of the opiate problem and eliminate it to show the rest of the world that Ohio can be the number one it. answer yes. for this. And and I know prosperity thinking, I, I always think in those terms of money. Uh, sure. And I know that everybody likes the term $500,000 we could collect in taxes a year. And we have $500 million. Right. million. And we have failed to do that for 22 years. Alan, Alan, marijuana sales are happening right here in Worthington, Ohio tonight. I'm sure of it. Absolutely. But we're not getting any taxes. And the marijuana is coming from Columbia. It's being brought in by organized crime. It's not creating any jobs in Ohio. Well, well I think the jobs it's creating end up in jail. I think a third of the marijuana sense. is coming in that way Do you? from out of state. But I'm going to tell you, I think two thirds of it is grown right here between the sweet corn of Ohio, and farmers that need to make the tractor payment or the tax payment. I don't disagree. Have been scraping by in Ohio, and I think we need to change that too and let them enjoy the prosperity of legalization. Why are we turning instead of a bunch of guys out of California or Colorado? Why are we turning our farmers into criminals? That makes no sense that, at all. That, that, thank you. Thank our you. farmers, our doctors, our kids. Uh, who else are we going to make criminals before we decide? This is a harmless drug. It is no different from alcohol, and it's no different from tobacco. Regulate it, tax it, make it safe. Well, now one of the statements that I guess being cynical that I hear from some of my friends is, okay, Alan, so $500 million a year you could collect in taxes, another $150 million you could save by not just throwing people recklessly in jail in Ohio. Yeah. Uh, so $650 million. Is this going to be like lottery money? It never no. gets to where it's supposed to go? No. And that's, that's why, uh, to compare myself to my Democratic colleagues, you need leadership with courage. I'm a, I'm a retired lieutenant colonel in the United States Army. I know how to find the objective and lead people. You elect me. We will be electing Democratic state reps and state senators. I would who, like to have had, get you, it. Who had get you on it. just to talk about your military career, because oh my gosh, no, it's boring. It's I'm, boring. I'm yeah, sorry. No, I grew I, up in Vietnam. I had friends that lost their legs and arms and lives in okay. Vietnam. And okay. when I run into a guy that, uh, pardon me, Justice, yes, Bronze Star he Hero, is. Ohio Veterans Hall of Fame. I am not a hero, sir. I will not take that title. What do you do to get a Bronze Star? You do a good job and you show courage. You were the first one in and the last one out. Well, I had a small unit that went to the Laotian border and we ran into some difficulties. So you were really in the ugly middle of Vietnam and you came back and, and you put yourself back through school, you raised your family. Bill. GI Bill. And let's, not, let's talk about that. I was the beneficiary of the bargain. Join the Army for two years, we'll educate you. We're not doing that today. Yeah. Yeah, it's time that we start giving back our college graduates good jobs and good money and we start attracting the right kind of jobs back in a while. Because these minimum wage jobs, <clears throat> and they're not even getting up to, as you've talked about, they're not even getting up to the $15 mark. But we need to have kids, we don't want to forgive their college educations, we don't want to give them charity and steal them their dignity from their hearts. No. No. What we want to do is give them $500,000 a year of jobs and see them 
prosper and Ohio prosper and Ohio prosper more than any other state in the United States. And that tells, and that's by telling employers that are out of the state that we value our people. Yes. And that means we're not imprisoning them for non-criminals. And yes. Ohio first. And, 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 we'll t- and, 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 and we're building solar panels made in Ohio. We're building wind turbines made in Ohio. We actually value our, in, our workforce by straightening out the educational system, by reducing the cost of a college education so that the people can get the high-tech jobs here and stay here. Thank you. Investment. That's why I endorsed my friend, Bill O'Neill. My friend, Alan Mooney. God bless. We're together. We need you folks. Yep. Well, it's been a huge honor to work with you in this campaign. Me too. I really mean that. Me too. You, you, you've given me the spiritual strength to go forward. Um, well, it's nice to have met somebody that lives their convictions and has done that their whole life. That is a big rarity. Hmm. All right, gentlemen, we are live whenever you want to start. All right.